Hello, I am Joshua P. Warren, and this is Joshua P. Warren Daily. And yesterday, I literally turned to Lauren and said, Lauren, this is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. And she knows I can be an excitable boy, but we've been together for 23 years, and even she could tell that, well, Josh is really impressed with this thing and so I am happy to tell you about it right now and give you the opportunity to experiment with it and maybe in a whole brand new way okay so this is a story that really begins back when I was just a wee lad in the old country of Asheville North Carolina and in those days, I just, all I did growing up as a kid was just experiment with different forms of scientific knowledge. I mean, you can imagine that, okay? That's all I did constantly. I had a big uh, Xeroxed picture of Thomas Edison that I pasted on the wall of the, the basement and my lab was down there and uh, every form of, uh, of dangerous thing you can imagine was being experimented with. But I was especially interested with, in, um, in optics. Optics, that, you know, the study of light and, you know, what is light. And uh, obviously that is a, that's one of the fundamental mysteries of how the universe works is understanding the nature of light. But anyway, uh, I really learned so much about light that as time went on, I became more and more interested in photography, and I, I bought all kinds of different cameras, medium format cameras, large format cameras, finally motion picture cameras, and I even in, ended up making a, um, a 16 millimeter feature film that I had to, you know, cut and splice and edit in all of these crude old ways. So my point is, it all starts, however, with something that was understood hundreds of years ago, going back to at least the 1500s, probably much, much farther back than that, much further back. Um, the pinhole camera concept. And... It, what this basically means is, uh, you probably get the gist of it already, but if you have a pinhole and it is basically on the edge or, or the side of a dark space, then any lighted scene on the other side of it projects through that and you can see it if the background is the right distance and all that with incredible clarity. You don't need a lens or anything like that. And so the very earliest forms of cameras were pinhole cameras. And uh, I mean, literally, you can go on YouTube and find out how to make a pinhole camera. Uh, what you do is you get a box that's, it's not that much different than a shoe box. I mean, you, usually the ones they, they make are cardboard boxes that are about half the size of a shoe box. And then, um, once you have the dimensions right, all you need is a pinhole on one side of it. And, uh, I mean, literally, like, you know, take a little needle or some kind of a straight pin or whatever and just punch it in there. You're better off if you don't punch it through cardboard because cardboard's, you know, kind of soft and it might squish that hole up. So usually when they make them, they'll cut out a little window. And for the actual pinhole, you'll have a piece of uh, cheap metal, like a piece of aluminum from a Coke can or something like that that you sort of flatten out. And you'll punch your, your actual hole in that. So you have a hole that you can cover and uncover on one side of the box, and that's your camera. And after that, all you need is a piece of film. And you, you, know, you go into a dark room, could be your bathroom or your closet or whatever, and you open the box and you put the film down in there against the back and then you close it up and you've got to make sure that you know it's sealed okay 
You don't want any light leaking in there. And then you can go out to the park or your back porch or your yard or whatever. And all you have to do at that point is find a nice pretty scene, the trees, the birds, the mountains, the desert. And then you just slide that cover off of that pinhole and you might have to expose it for, I don't know, 10, 20, uh, 30 seconds, depending on the situation, because there are variables in terms of how sensitive your film is and all that. But the point is, when you cover it back up, now you can go into a dark room, seal that film up, and send it off to be developed, or develop it yourself, and you will be astounded at the beautiful images that you can create just by using a pinhole and a big nice piece of film and this is the the, the the basis of all photography and what we now consider you know videography and filmmaking etc so as a kid i used to make these kinds of devices but they are so much better if you have a magnifying glass and if you've never done this uh, turn off all the lights in your house and if you've got a magnifying glass sit in front of your TV or your computer and the only light in the room should be from the TV or the computer and then hold your magnifying glass in front of the TV or computer and if you sort of move it closer and farther away from the screen you'll get the distance just right and all of a sudden bang you will see this beautiful projection of your TV screen or your computer screen show up on your wall or your curtain or whatever your background is now it'll be upside down and reverse left to right which we won't even get into how and why that happens but you'll see the image there and so the uh, when I was a kid, I would take, I would literally take a shoebox at that point, and I would remove the lid, and I would cut sort of a window into the lid, and put either very thin white paper or even wax paper on that window, and stick it back on. So now you have a shoebox that sort of has this little, you know, uh, kind of translucent white lid on it and then on the opposite side the bottom of the shoe box I would cut a hole and then I would stick a paper towel tube into that hole so I could sort of slide it back and forth and this is my focuser and then I would tape a magnifying glass onto the end of that and now I could go around and I could point that magnifying glass at any source of light and it would project it onto the top of the box. So in other words, I'm looking directly at the top of the box. The bottom is facing away from me and I'm reaching around to the bottom and I am sliding this tube in and out. Look, don't make any jokes here, okay? Please. And as I do that, it is focusing the image onto the screen. And it was just fascinating how that, you know, light would transmit through these, these little holes and produce this kind of interesting effect. We'll call that chapter one of this particular podcast. Now let's move on to chapter two. By the way, before we do that, what I created with a shoebox is what a lot of artists called camera obscura. They would make a whole big giant room just like that shoebox. And then they would especially have a lens if they could, and they would have a whole big scene that they would project onto the back of that box. And then they, they'd just have to sit in there and sort of draw it, trace it, paint it. And it was a very early form of, of reproducing things realistically by hand. Uh, as, and that also, that effect of the pinhole camera effect, it takes place naturally, uh, or at least accidentally, um, in, in some places. For example, I was looking online, and there is a castle in Prague called the New Royal Palace. 
and apparently if you go into the attic I don't know if this was done intentionally or not but there is a hole in one of the tiles on the ceiling and when the Sun's in the right position bang it projects this beautiful image into the attic of some of the castles on other parts of the property so I've even seen this happen accidentally in my own bedroom uh, when I was in Puerto Rico there was a little hole that would sometimes you know the light would hit it and I'd see the palm trees outside it's weird stuff like that that happens when you get these pinholes camera obscura pinhole effect you can look it up so here is chapter two chapter two uh, when I was in high school I remember that uh, I was in Deutsch class one day because I took German and uh, das Wetter heute, you know and I was sitting there with my classmates watching the teacher write something on the chalkboard and I turned to my classmates and said, how are we supposed to read that shit? And they all looked at me kind of funny. And that was my first clue that maybe my vision was going bad. So I went to the eye doctor and sure enough, I found out when I was, I think, I don't know, probably like the 10th grade or something like that, that I had become nearsighted. And it was one of those things, if you're a person who wears glasses, uh, it's kind of shocking when, for the first time ever, the doctor puts a lens down and everything just snaps into like bright crystal clarity, you know. I mean, uh, and then you realize, whoa, how long has it been like this? You know, when I, <laughs> I wasn't seeing as well as I could have. So... Um, I've been wearing glasses to some extent since I was in high school. I'm in my 40s now, so you know, for almost 30 years I've been wearing glasses. Now, being nearsighted, I, I don't have astigmatism and I don't even know enough about how the eyes work to try to explain to you medically what the difference is between my eyes and, and other people's eyes. I've heard, like, my sister has astigmatism, Lauren has astigmatism, and I think that means that there's the, some part of their eye is shaped like a football or something like that. Apparently, my eyes are shaped fine. They're just not focusing like they should. And, and it's a slight thing. I mean, up until recently, I could have passed my driver's test and, you know, reading the signs and all that without glasses on. But I've been nearsighted and I've worn glasses for, again, almost 30 years. So, um, just recently, I guess it was around the time I was in, in Colorado uh, filming last month, I got an email or some kind of a message from a listener, a listener of this podcast, and she sent me some links to all a page that had all kinds of weird interesting stuff on it and one of the things that they had were pinhole glasses and you may know what these are already but if not let me describe what they look like these are black frames similar to you know like cheap Ray-Ban style plastic frames like Ray-Ban sunglass frames but instead of having clear lenses the lenses have thick black plastic so if you just put them on like that well you wouldn't see a darn thing you're just looking at blackness however there are rows of pinholes literally about the size of a pinhole that go primarily horizontally they're um they're staggered i guess you could say but these rows 
of pinholes are all over both of these opaque black lenses. And I'm going to say there is perhaps, oh, no more than 100 pinholes in each one of these. And on the page that was selling them, uh, they said, if you get these, you can put them on and you can exercise your eyes and eventually you won't even have to wear glasses anymore. And they were relatively cheap, but I decided I would look around and see if I could find them somewhere cheaper. Don't we all do that? And I found a pair that I think is identical on eBay with shipping and handling and everything for less than $10. I think it was like $9.21 or something like that to have these things, you know, again, whole shebang shipped to my house. And you can get online and, and make them as well, but we'll get to that in a minute. So it took them a while to get here. God knows where they came from. But when they arrived, Lauren and I were going out. We, we just got into the car. Now here we are in Las Vegas, bright, sunny day. And uh, I checked the mail. Oh, look Look what I got. These are the old pinhole glasses. I'd almost forgotten that I bought them, as a matter of fact. It had been that long. And she was driving. So as we were going down the road to our first stop, I took off my glasses. And then I put on these plastic glasses. And again, all these are, are plastic with pinholes. I put them on and almost instantly said, holy shit. And Lauren goes, what? And I said, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> okay. When I put these on, I was shocked to find that I could see the world around me almost as clearly as I could wearing my glasses. Now, I'm not saying that these would be a reasonable substitute for your glasses, because for one thing, it does sort of darken everything a little bit, and um, and, and, and it is distracting that, you know, you are conscious of the fact that you're looking through holes. I mean, I'm putting them on right now, and I mean, let, let me just say right off the bat, the first thing that occurred to me was... If I lived hundreds of years ago and, you know, like before reasonable you know, glasses were invented or whatever, and I put these on, I would think it was a miracle. It, it's that, it was, it was that clear that immediately for me. And I just kept, you know, exchanging these for my regular glasses and taking them on and off and on and off and like... I was like, I can't even, you know, I can't even, I really was not expecting th this. And we pulled over at some point, of course, and I said, you got to try this. You got to try this. She put them on and she said that for her, they did not have any kind of clarifying effect. It just didn't work for her. And I found that amazing because it was such a profound effect for me. And, but again, we have different problems. She has the astigmatism and I don't have that. And again, I'm not going to get into what that means exactly. But all day long, I found myself like putting these things on and just looking around at the world. And okay, so let me pause here. And here is what Wikipedia, the almighty Wikipedia says about pinhole glasses. It says pinhole glasses, also known as stenopaic glasses, are eyeglasses with a series of pinhole sized perforations filling an opaque sheet of plastic in place of each lens. Similar to the workings of a pinhole camera, each perforation allows only a very narrow beam of light to enter the eye which reduces the size of the circle of confusion on the retina 
and increases depth of field. In eyes with refractive error, the result is often a sharper image. Okay, let me pause right there. So what is refractive error? Here's what that is. Refractive error is a problem with focusing light accurately on the retina due to the shape of the eye. The most common types of refractive error are nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism, and pres presbyopia. Okay, look, so I don't know exactly. I mean, like they're, they're, they're sort of like wrapping all this stuff up into one big package. It looks like to me called refractive error. It's like, yeah, well, that's, I think that's what most of us who wear glasses have some form of that. But in my form of refractive error, which is nearsightedness, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, this was like night and day. I mean, I, I would take a test on this, okay? Hand to God. You could sit, I'd bet you a hundred bucks, man. If you set me down and you put one of those uh, eye test charts up, uh, I I could pass it like like you wouldn't believe wearing these pinholes. So this is no bullshit, guys. All right, at, at least not for me, not for, for not for my eye condition. Um, and then it says, however, a second effect may appear at the common bridge between each two adjacent holes, whereby two different rays of light coming from the same object are diffracted back toward the eye and onto different places on the retina. Okay, I don't even understand that, so forget that. But anyway, they go on to say that, um, that some merchants are claiming that uh, if you if you use these over time, um, let's see that they can permanently improve eyesight. It says, however, there is no scientific evidence to support these claims due to a lack of formal clinical studies to substantiate this type of claim by companies selling pinhole glasses. This type of claim is no longer allowed to be made in the United States. Uh, under the terms of a legal settlement with the Federal Trade Commission. All right, so look, I cannot tell you that wearing these things is going to improve your vision permanently. Like you wear these every day to some extent and all of a sudden you won't have to wear your glasses. There, I mean, there are people on the internet who say that. Uh, now that I've started looking into it, I mean, you can find all kinds of testimonials. So I don't know if that's true or not. But all I know is that at the moment when you put these things on, uh, it, it it's, it's changing dramatically the way that light is coming into your eyes. Now, how you respond to that or react to it, I guess, is a different ballgame. So I got over my initial excitement with the fact that this pinhole effect worked so dramatically for me and then I started thinking like wow what if what if this effect somehow somehow allows us to more easily perceive paranormal phenomena okay now you might be thinking well that's a hell of a leap to make why not? Why not? Because everybody is so caught up right now on computers and software and all of these image processing devices. And it, wouldn't it just figure if something as simple as this, which has been around for hundreds of years, might help us actually somehow see paranormal frequencies or paranormal forms because that it's it's changing the directness of the light coming from the form a light that's usually flitting and look I'm not going to be able to explain to you this theory this elaborate theory for this idea that just popped into my mind you know like 10 minutes ago but I have not gone outside yet with these things 
and looked up in the sky to see if it increases my odds of seeing a UFO. I have not gone to a really haunted place and put them on to see if it increases my odds of seeing something spiritual. Now, here's what I did do right before I, I recorded this podcast. As you may or may not know, I am able to see the aura when I want to. And I've even taught people the technique for doing that. Most people can do it. There was a period of time when I even sold some glasses that were training glasses to help you see the aura. And um, those are, they sold out a long time ago. They were really a pain in the ass to make. So uh, maybe I'll make another batch at some point because people keep demanding those. Uh, but, uh, so, but those are just training glasses. I'm like, you only need those for a day or two and then you don't even need them anymore because it's a weird process you go through. So I, I can look at my own hand, for example, in front of a white wall as I'm doing right now and see my own aura and then put these glasses on and I can still see my aura, but actually it's diminished a little bit um so i i don't recommend this for for aura work at least not after just having this for you know a day or whatever so um so i'm going to be taking these pinhole glasses to um some haunted places and over the coming days i'm going to as it turns out you know i'm, I'm going to be filming some stuff so this is really good timing for me because i'm going to be going to some very active areas, places uh, around uh, Las Vegas and the Area 51 and all that that are notable for UFOs and ghosts and the whole shebang. So I'm bringing these with me and I will give you a report and let you know whether or not I see anything when I'm wearing these glasses. But I would like, if, if you're like me and you enjoy experimenting, I would like for you to see what happens when you get these glasses. Um, you know, that's sort of the power of this podcast is is getting a bunch of people's input. And I told you in one of my previous podcasts, please don't contact me uh, for the rest of this month unless you've got something really important to say because I'm so slammed. But um, if you get a pair of these and you see something, uh, well, that's important actually. <laughs> so, um, so here's what you can do. If you're like me, you can go to eBay and you can buy these things for less than $10, but it's going to take a while to get them sent to your house. Or you can go on to YouTube and you can type in make your own pinhole glasses and you will see a video there. And there are probably plenty of them, but there's a video there that's only like seven minutes long where this lady sits down and makes a pair of pinhole glasses. As long as you have some frames, some decent frames, and I guess you, you really could make your own frames, but I mean, it's gonna be easier if you already have some old frames that you don't use anymore. She'll show you her technique, and you know, I haven't watched her whole video, but it seems like she knows what she's doing. It looks pretty good to me. Um, and there may be other people on YouTube who are making pinhole glasses, but, I just felt it was important to share this with you right now because I'm excited about it. I just got these things and so I don't know what I'm talking about yet. All I can tell you is this, as a guy who has worn, as, as a guy who is nearsighted, who has worn glasses for almost 30 years, I was amazed at the uh, visual correction that I got from putting on these glasses that do not have clear lenses. I can tell you that for sure. And then when I start reflecting back on how bizarre like the whole pinhole camera obscura effect is in general, it makes me think maybe something this simple could create a benefit for us to see other things. Because I went online, trust me, I went online and I typed in pinhole glasses and paranormal and, and nothing came up. So I think this is a weird enough thing just on its own for people who are simply interested in improving vision, uh, which again, I don't practically recommend that for you 
these days. If you need to improve your vision, go to an eye doctor and get a regular pair of glasses. If you lived in 1550 or whatever, then this would change your life. So this is not not something I recommend for you in this day and age in order to improve your vision. But there may be some other attributes to these glasses that we don't yet know about, to this pinhole glasses concept that can help us see strange and paranormal things that would otherwise be invisible. Uh, how is that? I don't know yet. I don't know. And maybe it's wrong. But hey, as Einstein said, if we knew what we were doing, we wouldn't call it research. So there is an experiment. This is what I'm going to play with. I'll let you know what happens to me. And if you want something fun to do, well, there you go. It's cheap. You can make it at home if you want to, or, uh, you know, you can get it online through various means and play around with your own pinhole glasses. What do you think? Have I lost it finally? Or is this going to be one of those duh things? We should have figured this out long ago. Anyway, because I have such a busy week and we are filming and all that, I don't know when I'll be able to leave another podcast for you. I'll check messages whenever I can. So uh, please be patient and forgive me as... Uh, I said when I created this podcast called Joshua P. Warren Daily, I plan to try to leave one every day, and I did that for a while, but <laughs> as things have gotten busier and busier, it's more like Joshua P. Warren Weekly sometimes, but hey, I do my best. So anyway, if you have enjoyed this podcast, forward it to your friends, tell them all about it, go to my website, joshuapwarren.com, sign up for the free e-newsletter, Visit the Curiosity Shop. See some amazing things there you won't find anywhere else. Look at all the cool videos, pictures, experiments. And please click the link to this podcast called Joshua P. Warren Daily. It is always short, always free. It is commercial free, uncensored, independent. And you can subscribe through various means on different platforms or just follow me on Twitter at Joshua P. Warren at Joshua P. Warren and I will usually tweet when a new one is available. So that is it for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your interest and support. Thank you for staying curious and I will talk to you again soon.